Hey loves, welcome back to my channel. It's Kaylin Alex. If you're new here, welcome. Go ahead and subscribe, become part of the tribe. Awesome and great things happen over here. And if you're returning, thank you so much for tuning in. So today we have a special guest who is no stranger to the channel. <laughs> my lovely mother. Oh, let me let me correct myself because this is yes, a professional video. Please. This is a authorist. <laughs> strategist <laughs> woman of God a mother a wife a daughter a friend <laughs> and all of the a business mogul and all of the above I'm so honored to have you on our show today <laughs> so if you don't know my mom mrs. Andrea Haynes has officially launched her book she she has a book out we're gonna be discussing this book and what's in the book child and why you need to go get it so without further ado let's just jump right into discussing her book absolutely <laughs> okay is there anything you want to say to start off uh no but thank you for having me on your channel since we are doing a very professional video <laughs> you know I appreciate the opportunity and you sharing your platform with of me. course so I think without further ado, let's get into <laughs> this book. I did want to first give you the opportunity to just kind of share some of your um, like background and I guess a little bit about how the book got started. So wait, for, before she does that, mm -hmm. um, the book is, I'll let you say, I'll let you say, okay. give a brief synopsis and then I'll go into what I want to say next. Well, hello, tribe. I'm glad to be back here. I mean, she doesn't let me on here very often. Um, I know you all be you know, asking about me. So the only way that I get on here is you all ask about me. So when you all want to hear from me and you want my wisdom and my pearls of, of wisdom and knowledge, just, you know, put it down in the comments. And I am happy to show up. Okay. okay now, on to the book. Okay. First of all, uh, the book wasn't my idea. I did not want to share my story, my life, and my personal business and uh, mountaintops or even valley moments uh, with the world. But it was one of those uh, things. Glad to be back with the tribe. I'm super excited about this book and this uh, everything that you'll get from the book. Well, first of all, the book wasn't necessarily my idea. It was something that God had given me to do, uh, I would say probably about 10 years ago. At the time, I didn't think that I was ready to tell my story. Um, actually, I didn't really want to tell the story, but it was something that kept coming up and kept coming up. And I think during the quarantine time, it really allowed me the, um, the opportunity to be able to understand the impact of my story and just the fact that how life can throw you lemons and you have to make lemonade from it and that the good is just um, uh, as equally as important as the not so good moments in your life. And I think typically we want to share the good and that's all we want people to know about us. But we don't, very rarely, you have people who are excited uh, about sharing those valley moments. So uh, I took a journey, a journey obviously of healing and uh, deliverance. And it was, you know, the foundation was my faith. Um, and my love for God and just me wanting to honor uh, his wishes and his purpose for my life uh, in, in, you know, for write, in writing the book. So I got on this journey of writing and it just took a life of its own. And I allowed really truly the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me because it was a lot to unpack. It was a lot for me to have to remember or relive and a lot for me to, you know, to understand yeah. about my life that initially I really didn't understand about my life until I got on a journey of writing the book. So the book uh, is not just about my story. It's just not about me being a domestic violence survivor. The book is a guide uh, for anyone who is going through anything, whether it be a divorce, a uh, loss of a loved one, um, the loss of a relationship, the loss of a job. It is just a guide of a how to navigate through those challenging times in your life. Uh, and that's what I want people to get out of it, to understand that you too can survive off of broken pieces. Yeah. And what I like most about the book is that um, it's 
like she said, it's not, it's not, it's more so of a lesson, like the lesson that you learned yeah. through what you went through. Um, like she said, she is a domestic violence survivor. Um, you want to give them a brief synopsis of the incident so that they can kind of like understand well the absolutely back in 2004 um i believe it was yeah november yeah. 24 of 2004 um was a day that i'll never forget it was a day yeah. that my life completely changed uh, my estranged husband at that time um shot me close range in the face and he committed suicide at that time uh life for me uh took a, a different path than what I had anticipated. Although there had been things uh, going on and things had escalated and you'll find out those things uh, I shared in the book. But long story short, it was a defining moment for me because at that moment I realized that uh, my life mattered. I had purpose and that there was a reason that I survived. And from that day forward, I committed to making my life count and making every day of my life count. Because when you realize that you weren't supposed to be here and the enemy's job was to kill you and to take you out, and the fact that God stepped in and, and not only saved my life, but he restored me and restored me better than I was. And so for that, I give him all the glory and all the praise. So I can't help but do anything but serve him and honor him and use my life as a living example of his goodness, his grace, and most of all, his mercy. If nothing else, I want you to understand that God loves you no matter what you've been through, no matter what decisions that you have made, nothing can separate you from his love. Absolutely nothing. No sin, no fornication, no adultery, nothing can separate you from God's love. And from that day on up until I leave this earth, I understand that. And I want to share that with people to let you know that your life matters and, and, and you were worth saving just like I was. Yeah. And um, a part of the book, it's like the, the a book in its entirety. I had the privilege of reading it before it was printed. And I literally read it like as if I didn't know what was happening. Like <laughs> it is literally an attention grabber. Like every, every page you read each chapter, it literally captivates your attention and makes you want to like know okay how did you get out of this like how how yeah. in the world did you find yourself in this situation <laughs> and yeah. and then to make it out of it and then to see like how beautiful life is now is kind of like yeah. is it's amazing to see that you didn't allow the things that you experienced to you know shape you in a negative way like you use it to make a lesson which yeah. is what I hope that and with the message you were trying to convey with the book, and I hope everyone, the readers realize Absolutely. it, is that she makes the book, even though it's, it's a thriller. <laughs> you know, even though it's a serious situation, because obviously domestic violence is a very serious situation. But that's not even just the thing in the book. No, it's a small part of the book. Yeah. And But I, I make the book relatable to any situation my story just happened to be domestic violence. That may not be your story, but yet you can find yourself in the story. Which is what, that was the next point that I was going to make. <laughs> Even though I've, you know, I lived through the things that happened in the book, mm -hmm. I still reread it with the eyes of myself as a 26 year old and the things that I've experienced yeah. and how I can kind of change myself based on the lesson that you learned from what you went through like it yeah. wasn't like I have not gone through you know being shot or abused in that way so right. um I can't you know relate to that right. but within the story there's still something that I can see a lesson in myself about you know choosing the right partners and yeah, understanding that you're worth more than just you know, accepting whatever you get. Absolutely. And I think that's everybody's story. Yeah. Everybody has something in their life that they wish they, at the time, that it seemed like a good decision or the best decision for you to make at the time. But as you, after you've made that decision and you begin to process and navigate through that decision, you realize, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. I probably should have took uh, door 
or, or uh, door number two, yeah. but I didn't. So it doesn't mean that life is over. It doesn't mean yeah. that everything is uh, in the dumps. It just means that I've got to dust myself off. I got to pick myself back up again, and I've got to figure out what's next. I got to, I got to, you know, reevaluate some things yeah. and rewrite history, uh, rewrite my story. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what that's a that's a part of all of our journey. We've mm -hmm. all made some mistakes that we're not proud of. And the thing about it is you can either allow those mistakes to hinder you or you can allow those mistakes to fuel you. Yeah. For me, it was fuel. It was yeah. definitely fuel. I was not about to give up and throw in the towel because I made some poor decisions and those poor decisions allowed me to be in a relationship that at the time was not in my best interest. I just, it was just something in the on the inside of me and growing in my faith, I realized that it was the Holy Spirit that was leading and guiding me. It just would not allow me to give up no matter how many times I thought I wanted to take my life no matter how many times I thought that life wasn't worth living and that this is the worst that it could get for anybody something on the inside of me just wouldn't allow me to quit and I know that something that's on the inside of me is on the inside of each and every one of you don't give up don't throw in the towel just I mean some days I just had to make it through the next hour I couldn't I couldn't see beyond the day but I made it and I continue to take it day by day, some days hour by hour, some days minute by minute. But all glory to God that I am here and I am here as a living testament to the goodness uh, and grace of our uh, of my Lord and Amen. Savior. And I'm, I'm gr very grateful for that. And if it means me sharing my story with the world, even the most unpleasant parts, then so be it, <laughs> you know, because the truth of the matter is we all have them. Just some of us are not willing to share ours. Yeah. I'm okay with being an open book. I'm okay mm -hmm. with saying that I didn't make the best decisions. I'm okay with saying that, no, I should have done something differently. And I knew better in a lot of those situations. And that is the key. Mm -hmm. I think that people will get out of this book is that it wasn't like the things that happened that weren't favorable. Oh, they just happened because the other person was yeah. so bad. No, they happened because of a decision and a choice that I made. I took responsibility because those were decisions that mm -hmm. I made. And I think that we all get caught up in in the in the in the situation or the yeah. issue at hand mm -hmm. and we don't take responsibility yeah. because the other person shared more of the burden yeah. of whatever that negative thing was mm -hmm. but we all play a part yeah. there's two sides to every story and then yeah. there's the truth in the middle I think that's the biggest thing the biggest takeaway that I got from the book was that no matter what situation you were in you pivoted you, you if it was something a decision that you made or whether it was something that life throat through at you that you right. couldn't you know you know control you didn't allow it to just make you give up and I think that's like the focal yeah. point that keeps like po like popping out um at me is that this book is a lesson of keep going don't don't stop um no matter what the situation is no that's matter how right. ugly it is you be truthful to yourself you be honest with yourself and hold yourself accountable for the decisions that you make because at the end of the day you're the one who have to live with the decisions that you made um no one else does no one else can you know take on the burden of whatever guilt that you might feel yeah. for whatever situation you're going yeah. through it's easier to accept it and then do what's necessary to move on and heal which is the next thing that i want to talk about the mental health aspect of it um oh, yeah even from my perspective of being in some of the situations that happen in the book you know we had a pregnant family around us thank god yes sir. um Absolutely. and you know to see some of those things we obviously have gone through um counseling to just make sure yeah. that there's no residue there or the trauma that could have been there. I thank God that it's not there. I was young then, so sh they made sure that we were in counseling Absolutely. to talk about it. Yeah. But um, as I got older, making sure that I'm not attracting abusers or being the abuser. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really a thing, you know, because statistically speaking yeah you either attract a person who is abusive or you become abusive and yeah. so those were two things that i i monitor very closely uh with them growing up and especially when they started dating and in relationships because you don't want um to have that yeah. negative impact that no i'm not going to attract the abuser yeah. but you don't want to be abusive yeah. and toxic either yeah you know and yeah. i know there have been some instances where i've had to check you on like um i don't think that 
that was uh, the right decision. That was appropriate. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, and I'm not to- abusive, so I want to make that clear. Like, I ain't out here fighting and, and tearing up people. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but, but I think that people need to understand that, okay, a, a being abuse, being in an abusive situation is not just physical. Yeah. That's Verbally true. is the most terrific form of, of abuse. Yeah. Because when a person speaks a word, that word is place over and over and over and over and over in your mind when you have a scar or you have a bruise when that bruise heals most of the time you vaguely remember unless it left a scar yeah but those words you hear those words over and over and over and you get even when you're on to your next relationship some some kind of way the enemy always flashes those word words back and try to remind you of everything that you're not so it's very important to be to choose your words wisely Mm -hmm. and it's not um, it's not wise to use inappropriate words when you're upset yeah. and you're angry because you can't take words back. That's true. They're out and you said them. Yes, you can issue an apology, but honestly. You can't unhear those you words. You can't unhear mm-hmm. the words. And that's hurtful and it's damaging to the other person. So I'd rather just be quiet and walk away until I'm calm enough to have a mature conversation. Yeah. And what I would like to share with the audience is that uh, all abusers aren't um, males. There are some female abusers and I have had, you know, my share of them uh, who have reached out um, for help when they realized that their behavior and their tone and their actions just wasn't acceptable anymore. And some of them didn't even realize that they were abusive. Um, so I, I I help not only the survivors, but I help the abusers, and especially if you're if you're someone who is is married to someone who is toxic or abusive, and you have a family and you have kids and you are trying to work that thing out, um, I do my best uh, with the strategies that God has given me to keep that family together. If I feel like what um, uh, what I'm going to say and share can impact and change. Uh, you know that situation around uh, I do that uh, because it's important because the thing about it is what I realized in my own story was that there was history there was a generational thing that was plaguing me Mm -hmm. um, that I needed to deal with in order for it to stop with me Uh, and I kind of share that in the book also my uh, for-profit I do offer uh, coaching and counseling and and, and strategies Um, as well for those who have gotten out of the situation, but just find it kind of hard to pick up the pieces and get back, you know, to life and get back to living because you're continuing to relive those moments and those moments have hindered you. Uh, AndreaHaines.com is where I serve those uh, those individuals. And there is, uh, when, when I get ready to launch the book, there will be a new website that will launch as well that would have uh, my courses on there. Which will be linked down below. The webinars and different things that I, you know, that I will offer there to helping people uh, get back on track and regaining what the enemy thought that he stole. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it's very, very important for us to get to the root of how did we get here? Yeah. Um, because that's that's where I started. How did I find myself in that situation? Mm-hmm. How did I attract someone who who would do such a, a horrific thing? Yeah. Uh, and when you read the book, you'll see how it all unfolds, and you'll and you'll figure out, oh, that's how you attracted it. Yeah. Oh, well, this is you. You know, I think that you'll be surprised, but it will also bless you. And help you even in your situation if it's not domestic violence. It'll help you navigate through whatever it is that you're going through to know that life doesn't end there. And yes, we I made a bunch of mistakes. I made a, a lot of bad choices um, that I allow God to uh, intervene and turn around to work in my favor. Yeah. Hustling because it's in the effort required to reach a goal or have I only been hustling to gain worthiness? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what I, I figured out that's in the a ladder question <laughs> yeah I figured that out in the ladder that I was actually hustling for worthiness everything that I was doing you know the success uh that we think drives us mm-hmm. uh you know you want this amount of money or you want this type of house you want this type of car so I thought I was really hustling for those things but in the end I was just hustling for worthiness to feel valued Mm -hmm. um because i didn't because as you read the book you know growing up without a father so it all really goes back to daddy issues that was 
the root to everything um, that changed the entire trajectory of my life. Um, the other things were just branches off of that one particular thing. Um, but getting to the bottom of that really, really took me on a healing uh, and self-discovery journey um, till at this point in my life, you know, and it's been for, for a little while now, I no longer have to hustle for worthiness. Yeah. I know that, that I am worthy no matter whether I have uh, a lot of money or if I have a little money, yeah. if I have accomplished uh, some success goal or if I doesn't, if I, if I haven't, mm -hmm. your worthiness was already given to you the day that you were born. Mm -hmm. You were deemed worthy. So you were deemed worthy because Christ died for you on the cross. Yeah. And it wasn't predicated on whether you served him. It wasn't predicated on how good you are or how good you've been to others. It was simply because he loved you. And that is a powerful thing because the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin. Yeah. And I think that if we can look at love in that form instead of the falseness that we have defined it as, mm -hmm. as a feeling, it's not a feeling. Yeah. Uh, it's long suffering, it's patient, it's kind, it's not keeping up with wrongs. Yeah. That's a whole lot of things you can find over there in 1 Corinthians chapter yeah. 13. Mm -hmm. But, um, that hustling for worthiness is something that I think uh, women today, we uh, we battle with. Yeah. And we battle with it because sometimes of our upbringing, uh, sometimes because we haven't had that male figure to affirm us. Uh, we've had women who have, uh, you know, talked about us in a malicious manner, mm -hmm. uh, not because we had really done it, something to them to warrant the words, but just because they were, they were battling their own, uh, unworthiness. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's just a, a, a crazy cycle that we get on. And, and my goal is to just do my, and play my small part in helping women understand that we are better together mm -hmm. and we are stronger together and there's no need to fight against another woman about whatever they're doing yeah. um, and how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Because it takes courage to do anything that we choose yeah. to do. Right. Getting on this channel yes. takes courage. A lot of courage. <laughs> for a lot of, you know, influencers to do. Mm -hmm. Because you have the world yeah. watching you and critiquing you mm -hmm. and telling you what you can do better about yeah. it and what you should be doing this or you should be doing that. Yeah. So there is no need for that in what any field yeah. that you're in. You're always going to have critics who want to criticize or what I realized the ones who are criticizing are the ones who never do anything. Yeah. They never take the chance. Mm -hmm. I'm a risk taker, yeah. uh, calculated risk. If I feel like there are, are things that I should be doing, there is something on the inside of me mm -hmm. that will not let me rest until I do it. Yeah. And everybody has it. Yeah. It's just that for me, I don't, I don't think I had many people trying to stop me. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would question, whether or not it was a good well, idea. They knew you were going to do it anyway. Probably so. <laughs> Thank God you I did. You are that person. Like, well, I'm, I'm going to let you know what I'm going to do. I'm not really asking for permission or really what you think about it because I'm still going to do it. If it's something I want to do, I'm going to do it. Aren't you all glad that I did? Yes. I have, for me, <laughs> I mean, my, what? how do you say it? My biggest flex. My biz, biggest flex is being able to break generational curses. Yeah. That has been the most profound and powerful and mm -hmm. most exciting and honorable thing for me yeah. is to be able to take a write a list and see that everything that plagued my family mm -hmm. uh, from two, three generations yeah. back and to see that I have not only have I overcome those things, yeah. but I have made a positive impact in those who are after me yeah. uh, that they don't have to experience that. Yeah. And so that's that's huge for me. Mm -hmm. That's why I do what I do. That's mm -hmm. why we all should be doing what we do. Yeah. It's not for us to waddle in our mistakes and, oh, woe is me and never get up out the bed again. No, girlfriend, get up out of that bed. Turn that, turn them lemons into a lemonade or whatever you, whatever your favorite beverage is. <laughs> but get back up again so that those who come in behind you, especially if you have kids, that they don't have to experience that because if yeah. you don't break that cycle, it repeats. Mm -hmm. Whatever you found in your family history that, oh, that's just what my family do because I thought that was cute one while. That's just, that's just how I was raised. Yeah. 
No, that's a trick of the enemy to keep you bound, to keep you from all that God has for you. Don't allow to hinder you not one day forward. You take those, you take those lemons, you take that bad batch of whatever was in your family yeah. history and you turn it around. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy because trust me, it wasn't easy, mm -hmm. but I was just relentless. I refused to allow everything that I have been through to be in vain. That just wasn't going to happen yeah. with me. It's <laughs> not, not on my watch. So, okay. I wanted, did you want to talk about the services you offer? Um, the services I offer will be on the, on the website, but obviously, uh, coaching is the main one that I have uh, clients for currently, uh, strategy sessions mm -hmm. uh, in business and relationships um, that I offer. And like I said, I'll be rolling out some um, online courses and webinars and uh, mentorship uh, courses. That's going to come a little bit uh, later right now. Uh, I do have you know, a few clients that I'd like to see them through to the finish line of what we started. Mm -hmm. So I won't start that mentorship program until probably at the first or the top of next year. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the nonprofit? Profit? The nonprofit, um, due to COVID, we've been... My nonprofit is basically something that I share to let people know that it is there. But due to the nature of what it is that mm -hmm. we do, I kind of keep that on a private level mm -hmm. because of what is discussed and because of the seriousness of, especially if someone is in you know in the immediate danger mm -hmm. my goal is to make sure that they're safe and they get where they need to go and so the foundation has been able to help people with um you know who leave and may need one night of hotel stay mm -hmm. maybe they need two nights maybe they need a flight or mm -hmm. you know a bus ticket for their family to get to um you know, to safety, mm -hmm. whatever they need in that moment, yeah. we have been able to help kids, you know, because sometimes you, you leave uh, in a hurry, in a rush, yeah. you don't get to get your things. Mm -hmm. So we go out and we buy new things for yeah. them who donate to the foundation yeah. so that it allows me to be able to go and get them some nice things and, and, you know, and be able to feel some sense of normalcy. I think that when you're down, the last thing that you need to be reminded of is that, that you're in a bad, bad situation. Yeah. Um, and so I, I do my very best to make sure that they are comfortable, that they know that they're safe, and most importantly, that they know that they're loved and they have some support. Yeah. So um, is there any way that the people can donate if they choose to to the foundation or anything like um, that? Yes, www.hangshealingheart.org is the foundation mm -hmm. uh, website, and I think you're going to link yeah, I'll the link other the, one. Yeah, I'll link um, everything that I can down below. Be below. So absolutely, and just thank you in advance for your support um, during this time of COVID. There have been many, uh, obviously, if you know, you probably aware that the number of um, domestic violence cases has um, pretty much increased yeah. significantly um, because people who were once able to, you know, um, escape the escape the chaos mm -hmm. that's at home by going to work. When every when it when everything was shut down and everybody was home, yeah, it made it extremely difficult, and not only for you know women but also for children. Yeah, um, so it's a it's a big thing, and you know, like you said, touched on before, mental health. I'm a part of a uh, mental health organization mm -hmm. as well because a lot of times that is a big part yeah. of the abuse mm -hmm. is the uh, mental illness that's yeah. there or that has not been addressed. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm a part of an organization that helps with that. And so I love the work um, that I do because I have seen how uh, it benefits and the impact that it has on families. Yes. Well, this was great. I enjoyed talking with you as always. And I'm sure the people Thank enjoyed you. seeing you again. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you're all going to be back for a Q&A because once you read this book, you will have a lot of questions <laughs> that she probably won't want to answer. But it's okay. Probably not because, you know, it's my business, you know. <laughs> Which, I mean, you've put out there. If so my business can help someone else yeah. in their business, then by all means. Just keep it cute. Because uh, I like shoot to Shoot the questions back. away. There's no need. A person that has something negative to say about you, number one, that, that may be all they know. They may be around people who are only speaking negativity mm -hmm. to them. Don't, you don't fight fire with fire. You can't put a fire out with fire. You put fire out with water. Yeah. What is your water? A loving, kind word. A loving, kind response. Oh, well, thank you for that comment. That's what you say. You give them something nice back because here's the deal. That's a seed. Yeah. That's a seed that you planted. And trust me, when it's harvest time, 
Your harvest won't look like the person who's toxic. It won't look like the person who's negative. That's why some people get jealous of other people in their harvest season mm -hmm. because their harvest is so good and they think that, oh, you don't deserve that. Yeah. How did you get that? Somebody must have given it to you. No, you planted enough good seeds that when it was harvest time for you, you couldn't do nothing but be blessed. Yeah. So that's why you don't clap back. A person who has something negative to say, number one, is their opinion. Yeah. They're entitled to it. It doesn't mean that it's a fact because they had an yeah. opinion. And on that note, <laughs> Wired Shut is the name of the book. And by the time you guys are seeing this video, it will be available to purchase at uh, IamAndreaHaines.com. Buy you one, buy your friend one, buy the whole family one. It is definitely a thriller. I'm so proud of you. Um, Thank you. You have done an amazing job with this book. You have went to levels that I know you didn't think that you could go to to no, write this book. I, I did not. I had, <laughs> but you did it. <laughs> I did. And I've had a couple requests for people with book clubs. I've never done a book club oh, before, cool. but I'm excited about mm -hmm. it. Um, so, you guys, I really, really hope that you can get a copy of the book and really take the lessons that are in the book and... and yeah internalize them because I think that it's, it's very powerful and I'm not just saying it because it's my mom um, yeah. it truly is a powerful book a testimony and a lesson so um, I will again have all of the links for you to shop donate or whatever it is that you want to do down below um, is there any closing remarks that you wanted to make I want to know what you think so uh, definitely send me you know a review yeah uh, her Instagram, uh, I am yeah. Andrea Haynes, uh, at I am Andrea Haynes. So you guys can follow her on Instagram. What about Facebook? Is it back up? Yes. Okay. I had to get a new Facebook account, but it is um, Andrea Haynes. Okay. Yeah. So you guys can follow her around and, you know, see what she has going on. Her next speaking events and courses yeah. and things will be, she'll be updating those Absolutely. on her website and on her site. So, um... That is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, drop a nice comment down below, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get a notification when I post again. Shop this book and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.